Assalamu alaikum everybody. We are back again with our eighth session. Well, for octophobics, it is not bad. It is good. So, after a short break of Ramadan and Eid, I wish you all belated Eid and hope your the month of fasting was rejuvenating, spiritually evolving. And now we are back to our beautiful literary discussion club or the book club and we have insights to share with you and we would start with our small group today i excuse please excuse me for our low attendance but yes at least we did show up and this is a good start uh, we will be discussing various books which we have read recently and what we have felt and what we have been through in this gap during gap so we all have desire for knowledge and as someone great has said that desire needs space and when you give something a bit of space and a break you either get to know how important is it is for you or, and, or it becomes more desirable to you so this break has given us more energy more love more desire to be back to reading to discussing and being in touch with you. So, uh, to begin with, I would like to invite the budding reader, writer, a girl full of energy. I call her a flower, a lily, Udaisa Rena, and Udaisa would share her insight. Assalamu alaikum, everyone. Today, I'll be talking about a book by Ritwik Singh, namely, I Don't Love You Anymore. Ye kitab उस प्यार के साइकिल पे लिखी गई है जिसमें पहले तो प्यार होता है फिर दिल टूटता है फिर सदमा लगता है और फिर हम अपने हीलिंग प्रोसेस में लग जाते हैं आई लाइक टू स्टार्ट विद माय फेवरेट लाइंस फ्रॉम द बुक द ऑथर सेज व्हेन यू एंटर अ बुक स्टोर एंड अनएक्सपेक्टेडली फाइंड दैट वन बुक यू हैव बीन लुकिंग फॉर सिंस फॉरएवर that smile that covers you on seeing it if that same smile does not cover their face when they look into your eyes it's not worth it the first thing that it teaches us is the art of letting go and uh, how important it is to let go of the relationships that are not worth it and when you can't even get 10% of what you give the second thing that it teaches us is how we can navigate our grief and honor that grief that teaches us a lesson and after that hum chalte hain apni journey pe of uh, rediscovering ourselves first jo hum apne pyar mein kho chuke hote hain aur hum uh, retrospect karte hain apne aap ko aur jante hain aur thoda sa pehchante hain apni khamiyon ko thoda aur uh, embrace karte hain thoda aur pehchante hain uske baad hum khud ko heal karne ki journey pe nikal jate hain and the best way to heal yourself is the creativity and the act of creation becomes a bridge to self discovery then we need to maintain our boundaries uh, to maintain our mental and inner peace after that we need to embrace the changes and change jo hote hain wo hamare liye opportunities hote hain aur wo hame hamesha har kisi journey pe le jate hain after that love beyond romance we have to seek for meaningful relationships instead of depending on somebody's love and romance and then we have to maintain our individuality and we have to create a joyful present and we need to keep dreaming at the end i would like to conclude with a beautiful saying of the uh, poet he says mujhe tumse pyar hai aur main aasha karta hu ki tumhe bhi tumse itna pyar ho ki jo tumhara dil tode tum use chhod pao thank you everyone Uh, thank you, Udaisa, for a wonderful book review of the journey we have all been through, or would be, or would be in. So heartbreak, and then next, someone great has said that we will all get the love we have given, but we don't have to expect it from the same source. We will get it, but you have to keep your mind prepared. That brings me to our uh, next member. It's a new addition, Mr. Uh, Zahoor Farooq. Zahoor is a teacher by profession. He loves reading, and uh, 
He's an introvert by nature and likes to keep things to himself, but he has found a great way of expressing himself through short stories and reading and, uh, you know, and enunciating his voice through the characters he mentions in his short stories, which have been published in Greater Kashmir. Today, he will be reviewing the book, The Great Gatsby, which has been an eye opener to him. And uh, we would see what his journey was like. Thank you. Today, I'm going to review a book that I have recently read, titled as The Great Gatsby by F. Scott Fitzgerald. When I first picked up this book, up until then, I was extremely intrigued by the writing style of Haruki Murakami. He mentions F. Scott Fitzgerald in his several books. That's how I came to know about him. So I grabbed this book. The first few pages were elegantly written, kept me hooked until a certain point. And I could not resist taking a plunge into his world. However, as the story progresses, it starts to get dry. And I was, I you know I was struggling and I could not keep up with the pace of the book. And I found myself trapped in the darkness, like a, you know, a person found himself trapped in the darkness, making his way out into the light. So I finally put it down. But since there was a lot of buzz in the literary world about this masterpiece, I grabbed it again. But this time with relentless will to finish it. So I embarked on a journey. Of course, I came across certain plots which were intricately woven. And I had a difficult time sailing through the storms that I encountered along the way. Uh, finally, I made it to my destiny. The Great Gatsby by F. Scott Fitzgerald uh, is a book set in 1920. It offers a few glimpses into jazz age. The jazz age was a period back in 1920 when people in America devoted themselves to the pursuit of wealth and accumulation of materials. So it's a story of Jay Gatsby, a rich and mysterious man who throws lavish parties at his house in West Egg, Long Island, with this intention that he could win Daisy's love back. The storyteller, Nick Carraway, moves to West Egg and becomes Jay Gatsby's neighbor. And it's through the narrator that we learn about Jay Gatsby's strong feelings for Daisy, a woman he loved before going to World War I. And when he did not return, after a long wait, Daisy ended up marrying a man by the name of Tom Buchanan, who was also extremely wealthy and did not spare any chance to distance Daisy from Jay Gatsby when he learns about their affair. Jay Gatsby has accumulated a lot of wealth hoping to win Daisy's love back, but their meeting was spoiled by, by the difficulties of wealth and the past they had experienced. The book explores the themes of love, money, an American dream, and uh, the, the problem was that the society had to face back in 1920. So, and the social ambition, how social ambition could be harmful in America in 1920. Of all the characters in the book, uh, Jay Gatsby draws my attention most. Even though Daisy Buchanan uh, tied the knot with Tom Buchanan, Gatsby's throwing uh, colossal parties, refers that you know, he was profoundly in love with Daisy Buchanan and his uh, relentless pursuit to rekindle that spark got him killed in the end. That's when I wanted to put down the book, but I went on holding on to the hope that something good may turn up, but none of that happened. So I finally, I was kind of disappointed with the ending of the book. Jay Gatsby was deluded by the fact that he equated accumulation of material and money with happiness. His, his constant chase after health, his constant chase after this uh, materials and accumulation of uh, money 
got him you know trouble got him into many such situations that he could not get himself out of later on and it also shows us that how past and how past can shape a person's present and future and how accumulation triumphed over ethics and honesty so i would like to recommend this book for two reasons first you will be extremely intrigued uh, by the captivating narrative that the author crafted throughout the book and the second thing is that you will uh, get an access to a society in 1920 which was deteriorating uh, decayed in the pursuit and facade of wealth and you will also get to know uh, the terrible things that happened back in america so that was it thank you today i would be reviewing a book by a physician called the Gabor, called gabor mate in his book the myth of normal this talks about illnesses trauma and the culture the toxic culture which most of us are in at various points in our lives and we normalize it thinking that it is okay to be like that to behave like that and how how the stress the trauma actually translates it translates into diseases right right from a small allergy which we call a cough cold to the gravest of the diseases which is cancer as a physician he says that each physician is actually a philosopher if he wants to become a best physician most of us when we go for any treatment the doctors ask what but he says that a physician has to dive deeper asking why and how everything in terms of diseases is an inflammation and the main cause of inflammation is cortisol cortisol is a stress hormone which triggers our cells and then certain symptoms appear what are all diseases cough cold inflammation of cells diseases like cancer multiple sclerosis hyperinflammation of various organs body parts and then what is the treatment the symptomatic treatment steroids again a hormone but he says that if we dive in deeper we would get to know that there are some triggers to these cells to these diseases and then the body responds to these he even has certain case studies where he sees that people in certain cultures environments were suffering from the smallest to the gravest diseases right from blurred vision to multiple sclerosis to even cancer and when they changed their life pattern and doctors had declared them dead within 2 years they changed their thinking they changed their expression they changed their places where they were not with these people not in these places not in these cultures they outgrew their symptoms and not only that the disease vanished on its own so as they say you can't heal in the same culture with the same people which made or who made you sick so we have to identify that if something is actually bothering us troubling us and we are feeling it and our bodies are giving certain signs to it we need to say we need to distance ourselves from that it is healthy and you have to detox yourself not only physically by taking clean food clean air but yes clean company that's what he says i would want everyone to read this book and you know see that how a person who was suffering from blurred vision with a toxic family didn't have any symptoms when she shifted to another place and the symptoms reappeared when she was in that family again how a mother who was declared with cancer and in a toxic relationship outgrew that cancer when she moved away so illnesses are choices as well and the environments where we live in and we don't have to normalize it thank you and over to the next ah uh, what a wonderful session of heart a heart which loves which breaks and then tries to regain that love again with mr zahur's book review and to what extent we go to get that love that person back when it is not meant for us why do we get fixated 
on a person, on a place or a thing. When we ourselves know that it is not good for us. The thing is that everything, everyone is here to teach us. And every heartbreak, every failure, every suffering is actually a redirection. We have to redirect somewhere else. And happiness is overrated. It is cliched. All the beautiful things, all the beautiful literature, pieces of art and creativity, as she said, comes from a broken heart. So broken hearts are good. Grieving is good. That matam is good. That is how we move to next. When someone passes away, they form a place for another person in the family. Imagine all the people from the day of Adam are alive and today present here. <laughs> it cannot be. Life is a circle and it has to be like that. And nothing is permanent. Everything is temporary. Enjoy the temporariness. Enjoy when it is there. Grieve when it goes. And next, go for your next iteration. Thank you and see you next week.